All right, this video is entitled uh, Half-Life, and um, before I get into what actually Half-Lives are specifically and how to do some of the math of Half-Lives, uh, I put this um, comic on the front. It says here, my carbon-14 date was a mummy. Now, that is funny. Now, the reason it's funny is because, you know, carbon-14 uh, is, is actually an isotope of carbon, and it actually goes undergoes beta decay, and becomes nitrogen 14 and the half-life of carbon 14 is about 5,500 years. So you can actually use, and they actually do use carbon 14 dating, which is called radiocarbon dating, to date mummies. So there are actually people who date mummies. And um, now the half-life is a pretty short half-life, about 5,000 years, as I said. So you can only date things back to about maybe 50 or 60,000 years. Because after that, so many half-lives have occurred that, um, you know, there just isn't very much carbon left to date. So carbon, uh, radiocarbon dating is used for dating organic matter and assuming the nitrogen, I mean, excuse me, the mummy was alive at some time and he's maybe wrapped in cotton, you could actually use carbon-14 dating to date a mummy. So some of you maybe will work in radiocarbon dating and you can actually tell people, I date mummies. All right, so let's go on. Uh, Half-life is something that all radioactive elements have. And there's not a whole lot to say about it, except that it's the time that is required for a sample to decay from one element to another. So like we were saying with the mummy and radiocarbon dating, if you have a sample of carbon-14, in 5,000 years or 5,500 years, half of that sample will turn from carbon-14 to nitrogen-14, and then in another half-life, another half of it will turn from carbon-14 to nitrogen-14, and so on and so on, until there really isn't any left. And it's often considered exponential decay. Now here is a, 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 a diagram that I thought would be helpful. Let's just pretend that this is radium-225. It actually has a half-life of about 15 days. It undergoes beta-minus decay, and it becomes actinium-225. Right. As you know, with beta decay, the mass number, this is the mass number, doesn't uh, change, but the atomic number does. So let's say this represents our sample of radium. Now there's a hundred little dots here, and we can think of it as grams or atoms or pounds or whatever you want to do, but most of the time we think of it in grams, so let's consider this as 100 grams of radium-225. And here's our graph. This is the percent of the isotope, so here's 100 percent. Uh, and we start with 100, and then here's the number of half-lives that are gonna occur. So from here to here, from zero to one half-life, that's 15 years. Well, after 15 years, excuse me, 15 days, after 15 days, half of the sample has become actinium-225. So we went from 100 grams of radium to only 50 grams of radium, and you can see here's the graph, and it's a curved line, an exponential curved line here. Now, after another half-life, or after two half-lives, which would be 30 days, now we only have 25 grams left, right? Half of 50, excuse me, half of 100 is 50, half of 50 is 25. So then after a third half-life, now we're going to be down to 12.5. Let's see, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, and we'll say that's 12.5. You can see the red dots represent the parent isotope, that's the radium, and the gray dots represent the daughter isotope, which is the actinium. And we could go on, after four half-lives, if this is 12.5, then this would be 6.25, and so on and so on. Uh, the percent that would remain after each half-life, or after a certain number of half-lives. All right, so um, that's kind of, I think, a good visual for how half-lives work. All right, so now we're going. All right, um, I thought now we'd do a couple problems and see if we can apply some of the half-life uh, uh, math, pro math problems to the stuff we know about half-life now. So let's just say we have, we have an element, and we're going to start out with the element um, plutonium. And the element plutonium it has the symbol PU. And if you look it up on the periodic table, the element plutonium is element number 94. And we'll go with uh, the isotope 241. And if you were to look it up also, 
you would know that that goes, undergoes beta decay. We know when beta decay occurs, we have a neutron turning into a proton, so our atomic number goes up by one, and our mass number stays the same. And if you look it up, 95 is americium. All right, so we have uh, plutonium undergoing beta decay to become americium-241. All right, so let's end the, the half-life of this element, or not of this element, but of the plutonium. The half-life for the plutonium is about 14 years. And we, what the question we want to answer is, if we start out with 50 grams of plutonium, how many grams of plutonium will we have after 42 years? Okay, so we have a total time that has elapsed, that's 42 years. We know the half-life is 14 years, and we want to know how much of a 50 gram sample of plutonium will be left after those 42 years. So all you got to do is you got to figure out how many half-lives there are, because it's the half-life that's going to determine, the number of half life that's going to determine how much is remaining. So we divide the 42 years by the 14 years, which is the half-life, the 42 years being the total time that has elapsed, and that turns out to be three half-lives. So what we do is we go back to our 50 gram, our beginning mass. We know after one half-life, we're down to 25 grams. And I just put a little one right there. And then after another half-life, we're down to 12.5 grams. So I put a little two right there. And then after our third half-life, I know that we're down to 6.25 grams. All right, so it's decaying at a rate of the half-life being 14 years, and we had 42 years occur. So we went from 50 grams down to 6.25 grams. All right, next problem. We'll do one more. Time for one more. And this one, let's just say we start with curium. So let's, um, let's for the heck of it, pick a different color. And let's say we have curium. And curium, we know the symbol for curium, if we look it up, is CM. And we know that curium has 96 for its atomic number, and we'll go with isotope 245. And we know that isotope 245 can undergo, or you can look it up, beta decay, excuse me, alpha decay. And if it undergoes alpha decay, we know that the atomic number is going to go down by four, and that the mass number is going to go down, excuse me, the atomic number goes down by two, and the mass number goes down by four, and that leaves us with plutonium. All right? And the half-life for curium-245, the half-life is 8,500 years. And let's just say we start off with a 600-gram sample, and we want to know how many years would have to go by to get that down to 37 point five grams. All right, so we want to know if we have a half-life of 8,500 years, if we start out with 600 grams of curium, how many years is it going to take to get that down to 37.5 uh, grams? So we got to figure out how many half-lives we, we would have to go through. So we start with 600 grams, and we know after one half-life, we're down to 300 grams. That's one half-life. After two half-lives, we know we're going to be down to 150 grams. After three half-lives, we know we're going to be down to 50 grams. I mean, excuse me, 75 grams. Every time we decrease the mass by half. And then finally, after four half-lives, excuse me, mark that out, we're down to 37.5 grams. And that would be four half-lives. So we've undergone four half-lives. We know that one half-life is 8,500 years. Therefore, we just take this, multiply it by four, and we're up to 34,000 years. To go from 600 grams to 37.5 grams, if we know that the half-life is 8,500 years. That's four half-lives. The half-life times four is 34,000 years. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. And they're all kind of standard like that. You just have to sometimes figure out how many half-lives or you have to figure out how many years it would take to go down from one mass to another. Thank you very much.